And secondly, we're going to say powerful prayers. Not only have to overcome obstacles, we have to be willing to pray desperate prayers. That's right. I think the reason why God answered this woman was because she was desperate. Yeah. She was yeah. desperate. Yeah. There was no way that her child was going to be healed outside of Jesus. Now understand today, we, we know our authority in Christ, right? We know that if there's someone who's demon possessed in the mighty name of Jesus, you as a believer in Christ have the authority to cast that demon out. But this was a Canaanite woman. Yeah. She didn't know about all of that. All she knew was that Jesus was her only hope and she was desperate. And I want to tell you this, that if you're desperate about your family, it's going to show up in your prayer life. Yeah. Yes. And I want to give you four desperate prayers that you might need to pray. They're powerful today. And the first one is the most startling because you would think that you wouldn't start here but really this is where you begin you start with this prayer lord change me that's right change me that's right. That's right. you see when you look at the story here of the canaanite woman it's very clear that jesus didn't want to just do a work in her child oh yes jesus was very concerned about the demon possessed child but you see jesus wanted to do a work in her Jesus wanted to do something in her. He wanted to see, have her exhibit the type of brokenness, the type of worship, the falling before him, the statements of faith that he could come in. Jesus also wanted that in her life. That's right. And so there are two people that God wants to change in a family. Nah. Yeah. Nah. I remember years ago dealing with a young couple, a couple weren't that young, but a couple that their daughter had gotten pregnant outside of marriage and and uh, they were obviously upset about that. You know, she wasn't married. And and, uh, and uh, if you listen to the mom and dad, you could really hear that it was about their anger, not towards the daughter, but about what it had done to them. Because they said this kind of word. They said, you've disgraced us. Huh. Now you tell me, who were they thinking of? Were they thinking of the daughter? Or were they thinking of themselves? And it wasn't until they had to deal with the issue of pride, how they looked in front of all their friends and family, that they were able to be able to be strongly reconciled to their daughter. Amen. I'm just here to tell you one of the most powerful prayers that anybody can pray is, Lord, change me. And I'm going to tell you about what happens when our children or, or some family member, an uncle or whoever it is, is being rebellious and straying away from what God wants them to be. What often happens to us as believers is that we get angry. And we get so angry that what can happen is the, angry can, ang the anger in us can cause us to harden. Oh, I'm preaching good now. Oh, yeah. well, it causes us to get hard. We harden ourselves, and we may not even realize it, but pretty soon what happens is instead of engaging that person, instead of being connected to that person, pretty soon we start disconnecting ourselves from them. We start distancing ourselves from them. Am I ready? We start getting so angry that in their presence and at a moment's notice, we're just ready to snap, and we come on them harder than we do other people. We're stronger with them with other people, and we chew them out at the drop of a hat, and what's happened is that the enemy has allowed that anger in us to, pro to, to produce a hardness. And we don't really have the tenderness that we need. And I'm just going to tell you, that's why some people who, who, whose their family can be completely, like, totally out of sync with God. And you talk to them about it, and they're just like, well, I don't really care. I, you know, I'm not concerned about that. I'm not worried about that. What has happened to them is that they've gotten hard. I'm preaching the truth yeah. this morning. Yeah. But what I'm hearing today to tell you is that the Holy Spirit wants to soften us. The Holy Spirit wants to tenderize us. The Holy Spirit wants to pour so much love and so much hope and so much courage and so much faith that on the inside of us that we absolutely get tender. That's right. Amen. You say, well, how does that happen? The last book of the Bible in the, New, in the Old Testament, Malachi 4 and verse 6 uh -huh. says this. It says that he will turn the hearts of the fathers. And we can say the fathers and the mothers. Am I right? Yeah. To the children and the hearts of the children. 
to the Father. When I read that, you know what I hear? I hear tenderness. I hear love. I hear grace. Come on. And so one of the most powerful things that we can say to the Lord is, Lord, change me. Let me be broken on the inside. Let your tenderness work down deep inside of me. Even though I've been hurt. Even though I haven't been respected as a parent. Even though I have been, uh, they, they, they don't treat me the way they ought to. Lord, I just want to be so tender and so sweet and so full of honey and so full of the love of Jesus. Come on, somebody. So, so that no matter how they do, what they, how they act, what, you respond in a way that's honoring and glorifying you, Lord Jesus Christ. Come on. Give the Lord a hand of praise. Make you say, God, I just want to be tender before you. Lord, change me. And the second prayer is powerful. It says, Lord, they are yours. It is not our job to fix every member of our family. Amen. Okay? Well, we're supposed to be concerned. We're supposed to pray. Let me tell you something. It's not our job. You can't do it, in fact. Amen. While our children are in the house, we have a responsibility, obviously, to bring them to church, to discipline them, to teach them the word of God. But there comes a point in, a, in someone's life when you have to relinquish them to God, turn them over to God. Amen. There's a, there's a point when you've said it so many times, they know what you're going to say before you say it. They've rejected what you've had to say. That's okay. Listen, what you do in your heart is you just turn them over to the Lord. You say, God, they, I, 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 they're yours. They belong to you. I dedicated them to you when they were a child. Or, or God, I just give them to you. You're the one that created them in the first place. Come on. How many of you know that God is as concerned? No, God is more concerned about them than we are. Amen. Can we give them a hand of praise? Lord, they're not mine anymore. I give them over to you. Amen. And the third prayer is this one. Lord, change their heart. If your family member has never been converted, they're not going to respond the way you hope because they can't. I'm going to let that one sink in. Yeah. Let That's me right. say it again. Yeah. If your family member has never received Christ and they don't, they're not a believer in Christ, they're not going to respond to you the way you hope because they can't. They cannot. They are bound to sin. The Bible says that when a person gets converted, okay, how many of you are with me? It's like a blind man seeing. It's like a deaf man hearing. It's like somebody who is dead being raised up out of the grave. And how many of you know that a police officer who was coming to church here threatened our dear brother John Rousey back there in the back? Yeah, came in, decided he'd been taking drugs and drinking that morning, and he decided he was going to take over the service. He was obviously, uh, you know, not in the frame of mind that he should have been, and when we asked him, please go sit down, he wouldn't, and finally he hit a police officer. He got arrested that day. I, I know that sounds crazy, and he wound up going back to jail. He was like, you know, on probation, and it was like, well, I guess three strikes in your hand, I don't know how all that works, but he wound up going back to jail that day. But the crazy part about it was that his mother came. His mother called me up the next week, and she was absolutely furious, demanding that I tell this police officer who had pressed the charges to drop the charges, and on and on. She was trying to rescue him. I said, Miss, I said, Miss, your son is 40 years old. You need to let sin run its course. You can't get drunk and do drugs and come into a church and hit a police officer and think that that's okay. Right. Let God deal with them. I want to tell you a story, and I want to close with this today. My, my. 1,600 years ago, there was a woman by the name of Monica. That's a long time ago, right? 1,600 years. Monica was in an arranged marriage. I guess that's how they did it back then. And she was a fervent Christian, but she married an unbeliever. She had three sons, and two walked with God, and one didn't. One that ran off and lived very immorally with a mistress and loved the sinful lifestyle of sexuality. And Monica used to pray for her wayward son. She used to weep for her wayward son. And one day she went to her bishop and was talking to her bishop. And of course, you know, that's uh, the only church there was back then. And uh, the bishop said some of the most famous words in all of church history. He said this. 
He said, it is not possible that a son of so many tears would perish. Your son will be saved. A few years before she died, her son was saved. Apparently her husband also came to Christ before he died. And the son's name, and if you've studied it all church history, you've heard his name. His name was Augustine. And what happened was that he was in a garden one day and he overheard some children singing a little song. And they seemed to be saying, take up and read. Take up and read. And he perceived that that was God telling him that he needed to go read the Bible. So he sought out a Bible. He opened the Bible up. And remember, he's living according to his desires and his sensuality and his sexuality. And he opens up the Bible to the passage in Romans. And he begins to read these words. He says, let us walk properly as in the daytime, not in orgies and drunkenness, not in sexual immorality and sensuality, not in quarreling and jealousy, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. And as he read that scripture, he was overwhelmed with the conviction of the Holy Spirit. He had repented at once, turned his heart to God, and he became a very famous believer. And interestingly enough, in the book he wrote called Confession, this is what he said about his mother. He said, my mother watered the earth with her tears. How beautiful is that? And I'm just ready to tell you that God sees every tear. And I'm going to tell you something that goes even a little bit beyond that. The scripture tells us in the book of Psalms that God bottles every single tear. He's, those tears are so precious to the Lord that he stores them up in a bottle. Amen. That's how precious his, your tears are about your family. Would you stand with me today? Amen. Sister Comfort, would you go get the kids? Thank you so much.